Hello everybody, this is Todd with Power Driven and this is my drag race truck, the Cummins Car. The last time I did a video on this, on this channel, I was going to Texas last fall for the NHRD Finals. And I was in a hurry and I put a motor in this truck. It was not worthy of what I needed to do and I heard a piston and it lasted about three passes. The piston was smoked. So I decided for this year I'm going to put a proper motor in this thing, put a forged piston, awesome engine. And this is how the thing went together. When I was putting this engine together, I really wanted an easy to use drag race truck. In the past at the Godfather, which was so radical, I had to have a whole team of guys just to have that thing work in the track. People to pull me back from the return road, to push me in the pits. It was awful. A lot of fun, but awful. So I wanted to keep this thing water cooled, the radiator, very simple. I could drive it to the staging lanes, race it, drive back to the pits, be able to campaign this by myself. So. Keeping this thing water cool is of the utmost importance to me. I took a stock 6-7 Cummins block and I sleeved it down with some power bore sleeves down to a 4 and 8 bore. That puts me at a 6.4 liter Cummins engine. Then I topped it off with some diamond forged pistons and some Wagler rods. So it's a pretty decent build. Uh, should handle some good power. 2000 should not stress it too much. And that should be enough power to be competitive in my class. If I need more, I'll get more. But I really want this to be a easy to use, fun truck. With these diamond forged pistons, I went to Total Sail for my rings. I used a gapless second ring, and the Total Sail rings are file to fit rings, meaning I gotta put them in the bores, measure how much ring end gap I have, and then I add to it and I get my ring filer. And I set each ring, top ring, second ring, the little tiny gapless ring, and even oil control rings, I set them all, make sure I have adequate clearance so I don't butt rings, then ruin this motor. For this build, I decided to bring back the massively awesome 16 millimeter uh, paint pump that Seth Farrell built for me a couple years back for the Godfather. It's an awesome pump, puts out a ton of fuel. It's really more than I need for 2000 horsepower, but I freaking love that pump. And so I decided to go with the 16 mil pump in this build, uh, keep the fuel rate kind of low, and just take advantage of that awesome injection rate. A big part of any race engine build is your cylinder head. That's how your air gets in and your exhaust gets out. On the last motor I had in the Cummins cart, we had a decent head, but I wanted more. So we got a fresh head and really went to town. We took this head and put it on our Rottler, did a fresh port job. The most aggressive one we've actually done so far on the machine, but really we're kind of the limit of a shelf on application. But I already had the turbo system built, so I wanted to keep the shelf on because it made it easy. And we got pretty good flow numbers out of it. Once it was ported, we went ahead and cut the firings right down the CNC, that way they're perfectly level, perfectly true with the head. And then the head was done, ready to go on the motor. For this build, I'm gonna utilize the Colt Stage 5 camshaft. This is like a 200, 220 inch camshaft. I really like the profile of the lobes. It's not so um, steep, a little bit easier on the, the lifters. I'm using coat lifters as well. So uh, with this 16 millimeter pump, I have to go to straight cut gears. The helical gears is great for keeping it quiet, but it puts these thrusting loads onto the gear face and you break camshafts with these helical gears. I have a set of straight cuts left over from the Godfather that I'm gonna throw on this thing. Then I know I can actually run a cast cam with this 16 mil pump and I'll be fine because all that crazy thrusting weird stuff is gonna be gone. Some nice easy force and plus they sound freaking sweet. I love the gear train wine, it sounds awesome. With the straight cut gears, I had to modify the hub of the cam gear just a little bit for some added oil clearance. I'm not sure it's 100% necessary, but I felt better about it. So I chucked it in the lathe, and I think it's pretty cool to watch a cam spinning on a lathe. So I got a shot of it. I hope you think it's cool too. With this cam hub and this adjustable gear, we can set cam timing however we want. We'll set up this cool device using an old push rod, a digital dial indicator, an old flex plate, and a paint pen. With this setup, we can very accurately measure and take center line across many different camshafts and set this right where we want. The Colt Stage 5 drops in about 95 degrees intake center line. What does that mean and what do we do? So that means the intake valve is at peak lift, meaning the lobe is all the way up. The intake valve is at peak lift 95 degrees after that cylinder reached top dead center. So it goes up and 95 degrees later, that valve is at peak lift. I change that from 95 degrees to 103 degrees. So my peak lift happens later in the cycle. Everything happens later in the cycle when you retard the cam. Exhaust events, intake advance, everything happens later. But that's gonna give me more top end power, hopefully. We'll get on the dyno, we'll find out. The last few items in this build are the fasteners. I'm using OptiTorque 14 millimeter head studs and OptiTorque 14 millimeter main studs. Uh, I've torqued it up to 175 foot pounds cold 
And on these ones are a little different than like an ARP stud. You need to do your torques cold. So I do my tor initial torque, warm the engine up, then go back down to cold and hit them again, make sure they are solid at 175. I've had great luck with these in the past. It's what I ran the Godfather. It's what I'm running here. It's what I run on Ruby in my race truck, or my tow truck rather, excuse me. And I just love 14 millimeter hardware. They're awesome. It's time to put on the Steed Speed 3000. Uh, should work awesome. I'm very excited to have this guy on the Cummins cart. All right, the Steed Speed 3000 is now installed. Use my Stage 8 fastener so the manifold uh, bolts will not come loose. I love these things. I ended up not using that Steed Speed 3000 exhaust manifold. I ended up going back to what I had on it before. This is a regular competition T6 Steed Speed manifold with a single wastegate. Uh, the reason I went to this one is I just ran out of time. I didn't have time to fat up another wastegate pipe. It moves the turbo a little bit, so I have to kind of redo the turbo system. So I ended up taking that off, but don't worry, I do have it. It is going to end up on this vehicle. I'm excited for it, but in the interest of time, trying to get this race, I had to just go back with this one for now. But I'm excited for the next one. For the transmission in the Cummins cart, we're using a new experimental unit. This is an SFI rated case, a bolt-on SFI rated bell housing, a heavy duty overdrive, and it's pretty freaking sweet. We've actually been in contact quite a bit with the manufacturer. This is a, not even the final version yet. We're still gonna make a few more changes with them. But right now it's pretty sweet because I don't have to run that flex plate shield or blanket. It's super easy, looks sick, and uh, I'm very excited about it. The way we put this coming cars together, I can put the transmission, transfer case, engine, all bolted together in as one unit into the truck. It's a pretty massive thing hanging off the end of your cherry picker, but it does make it pretty slick. Getting this thing in and in place is actually pretty easy. It does help having a little bit of girth, which I do have, thankfully, but in the end, it went in pretty nice and sweet. Once this thing was together, it's time to go on the dyno. One last piece was the fuel injectors. We partnered with Lenny at Dynamite Deep Performance to make us some massive 6x22 large feed injectors, and pairing those with a 16 mil pump just is audio bliss. It sounds great. I can listen to this thing idle for hours. It sounds so good. Okay, got this in the dyno. It sounds awesome, it's working great. But pretty quick, I'm getting nervous about these injectors. Now they're pretty big, but are they 16 millimeter P-pump big? At the very low fuel settings, everything was cherry running good. But as I started turning the fuel up a little bit, I noticed it started to miss a higher fuel, I started a little nervous. So I decided I'm just gonna swap in a 13 millimeter P-pump. With a 13 millimeter pump put in place, the high RPM issues went away. So I'm feeling pretty confident. I know these injectors are plenty big for a 13 mil pump, and the thing just sounds amazing. Revs the moon, 5,000 RPM, no problem. We're making good power. With the last engine in here, we were peaking at about 1,150 horsepower with a fuel-only setup, and now we're in the mid 1,300. So we picked up a solid 200 horsepower with a better flowing head, different camshaft, different pistons. So I'm pretty excited to see what we can do with some nitrous. The nitrous runs on this truck were amazing. They were scary, crazy, and freaking cool. Fire was awesome. The noise was intense. The little mock diamond rings coming out the exhaust stack of the wastegate was really cool to see. We picked up like 500 horsepower. So now we're, you know, 1800-ish horsepower pulls. And I'm getting pretty excited thinking this thing's gonna be fast. I do have one small problem after these 1800 horsepower runs. You may notice that when I do a dyno run in this truck, I start in third gear and I ramp it up and I hit overdrive and mash it. And I do this so I get on top of the charger early and not have, have such a long run. And so I hit it in third, then I shift to fourth. But there's a little bit of delay between the time I flip the switch and the gear change actually happens. Well, this thing ran about 5,800 RPM before the fourth gear shift happened. I was gonna do another pull, not with nitrous, just another quick little run to see how things are going. I started to have some issues that the truck was missing. It was missing pretty badly, so I'm like, oh geez, this sucks. At first, I'm worried I just have an injector issue. The injector's hung open. So the next morning when I got back to the shop, I thought, well, quickly, I'll just start this thing up and crack some lines and see if I can figure out which injector's causing the issues. When you crack a line, that injector goes off grid, so to say, and no longer works. And if you hear a noticeable change in the way your engine's running, you know that injector was contributing. If you crack an injector and there's no change, that's probably the one that's giving you fits. So I thought I'd check it and see if I could find out which one it was. 
When I got the valve cover off in the shop, I know it's an even bigger problem and now I'm actually pretty worried. I didn't get any footage of it and I'm sorry, but the exhaust rocker arm was broken. Not the rocker arm itself, the little steel piece that connects the rocker arm to the valve bridge. That piece was busted off, but I'm like, I'm just going to place the injectors anyway. I'll replace that rocker arm and hopefully everything's good to go. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Once the injectors were fixed, I threw them back in the head and I replaced the broken rocker arm and now it's time to start setting lash. As I'm going through, I find I have an even bigger problem than I realized. I cannot set lash because I have a broken lefter. That's a pretty deep fix. But I'm thinking, there's no way I'm hitting this race. So I need you to understand the severity of the situation that I'm now in. When you build race trucks like this, it takes a ridiculous amount of time. And if you're a family man, that's time you don't have. You have to make bargains with your wife. So I'm like, oh my gosh, my truck is down. I have spent weeks living in the shop and my wife has been through this many times. She's like, yeah, bull crap, you're doing all this stuff and it never works anyway, so why do you do this stuff? Well, I'm like, it's gonna be worth it. And man, I am just broken hearted right now because I know I'm not going to this race. I've wasted a ton of time putting this together and I'm just gonna be embarrassed when I go home and tell her I can't go to the race. So, Meyer and Will came in, we're talking about it, and we were thinking about it. Meyer's like, we've already in-frame piston swapped this once. Let's just lift it up, pull the pan off, pull the cam out, drop out lifters, fish in new lifters, put a new cam, and we're good to go. So we decided to go ahead and just give it a shot. And we start working on in-framing this cam and tap it swap. To do this swap, we're gonna go back to the tried and true wooden dowel mods. We stick wooden dowels in the tappets, pull them up, zip tie them together so it keeps the tappets up in the block. That way we can pull the cam out. So we pull the cam out, and when we pull the cam out, then we can drop down the tappets. At this point, I've already pulled the oil pan off, so I can just drop the tappets down. They just drop the bottom, out the bottom of the motor, and it's at this point we can really see the damage we have done to these tappets. We have completely blown apart the exhaust tappet, and the intake tappet is pretty damaged as well. They broke in pieces. Why do they break in pieces? What happened? Well, it's kind of back to that 5,800 RPM pull. I've got good valve springs in this, but I wasn't ever planning high 5,000s, and I don't have the valve springs in this necessary to handle that kind of RPM load. So, I have valve float. When you have valve float, things are bouncing around, hitting, smashing into each other. It's a problem. And that's my own fault for not putting in a better spring one or two revving it too high. Uh, it still made awesome power at 5,800 RPM, so I'm going to put in better valve springs. I'm not cutting RPM. I'm going better valve springs. All right, so we know what happened. Now it's time to fix it. So. First thing I do is put these tappets back in, which means I gotta put them on the dowel and push them back up. And Will climbed up on top and he was kind of receiving the dowels as I was pushing them up through the bore holes from the bottom of the engine. Now, if you've ever built an engine, it's kind of tight getting your hand around the crankshaft to push these things up. But once we got it figured out, we had a good system, we were able to get the tappets up pretty quick, not a big deal. I'm under the truck having the time of my life, laying under a drippy oil engine. It's great, Will's up there laughing at me the whole time. Once the tappets are in, we're able to fish in that new cam. I actually went a little bit bigger. It's a very similar cam. We'll call it a stage, a Colt Stage 5.5. It's kind of an experimental cam we had uh, Jeff make for us. And we're going to try a new cam and see what it does. So, new cam is in, tappets are in. Good job. <laughs> now it's just time for me to button the truck and put it all back together. What are you doing? I'm scraping off the gasket and the oil pan so I can put a new one on. So when I put the oil pan back on, I decided I'm not using RTV this time. I'm going straight gasket easy. You know, a smart old man once told me, he said, on street trucks, you use RTV. On race trucks, use a gasket. Because you're in that motor a lot. I'm going to go with this old racer's advice and pray for not too bad of a leak. Now, if it leaks, is it okay for us to mock you for not using RTV? Well, of course. I would expect nothing less. So I put the oil pan back on, no RTV, just a gasket, and news flash. I didn't have any oil leaks. It was awesome. Yay me. We got started late that night. And I was thrilled, I was excited, and it must have been late because Will is too dumb to push record. All he did was take pictures of me in the truck. So here's a picture of me in the truck late at night, just gonna get running. Okay guys, we are now in a big hurry. We need to load everything up so we can leave first thing Friday morning to the test and tomb Friday night in Arizona. I'm gonna get this thing on the dyno do a quick one or two pulls, fuel only, just to make sure the engine's fine. I didn't even bother setting up a recorder because one, I don't have time to set up a recorder, and two, 
I just do a quick pull and in the trailer she goes. So I get it on the dyno, strap down, start doing my pull, and it's just not right. It runs poorly. I'm like, what the heck? It's just bad. Let me do one quick more run. Maybe I, maybe I shifted wrong. Maybe it's the wrong gear. Worse result. Even worse. And so this is where the suck of racing is real. And after that last run, I turned it off and I went to start it again. And the motor cranked incredibly slow. The motor's now tight. If you go put a wrench on the dampener, you can't turn the thing over. It is now time for me to officially throw in the towel. I cannot make Arizona. The other guys got to get their stuff done, get loaded up. Their trucks are running. They got to load up and go. I can't go. And any gearhead hobbyist has been through the same thing I'm going through. Parts break. It's part of the game. But I will tell you, when it works, there is nothing like it anywhere. I've done a lot of cool stuff. I've been scuba diving. I've rappelled down waterfalls. That's pretty cool. I've done all kinds of fun stuff. Swam with stingrays. Been to tropical paradises. That's all cool. But it's like whole levels of magnitude better when you race. Racing is the funnest thing there is. The thrill you get when the thing you've worked on works and it goes fast is like nothing else there is. There's nothing I've done that even comes close. So it is fun. It's so fun that despite all the crap that I've just been through, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pull this motor out, figure out what went wrong, make it better, and I'm going to hit the August race, NHRDA in Montana, I think. That's my goal. i got a lot of work to do, but it's going to be fun. That's why I keep doing this, and I hope that you guys, through your setbacks, get through the sorrow of it, and get back in there, build your truck, do what you got to do, go have fun, because when it works, there's nothing else like it. It's well worth it.